Argon and Co. and Supply Chain Village are proud to present their new podcast Crossed Perspectives in the Pharmaceutical Industry. This episode is called Air to Sea Migration in the Pharmaceutical Sector. Antoine Trac, Head of Global Logistics and Serialization at Galderma, and Fabrice Corbière, partner at Argon Co., share their views on the topic. Hello, Antoine. Thank you for joining us on this Argo Co podcast, where we take a look at operations and supply chain in the pharmaceutical industry. Could you please introduce your company and your role in Galderma? Yes. So thank you, Fabrice, for inviting me to this uh, to this podcast. So Galderma, we are a life science company. Uh, we are specialized in dermatology and organized around three separated business units. Pharmaceutical, from one hand, cosmetics and aesthetics. Uh, basically, we we have a turnover that is a little bit above four billion dollars, uh, and we are, you know, expected to grow further in the upcoming years in uh, in all regions. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to my role in in Galderma, I'm heading customer service, global distribution and traceability. So I'm currently overseeing order management, warehousing. Uh, transport and deliveries, both from manufacturing entities to markets and from markets to customers. Okay, thank you for this uh, introduction. So the the reason I invited you is that you are the perfect embodiment uh, of how to take sustainability issues into account in the way you configure and you manage the supply chain. And I'd like you to share some feedback on an air to sea migration you implemented. Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. Will be my pleasure. Okay. My first question is: uh, Who or what triggered this project? What level of the organization pushed for this project? Was it top management? Uh, actually, yes. So three years ago, we started a company transformation uh, with all functions that were, you know, participating to that transformation, uh, with the goal to build a platform uh, to support sustainable growth and also to work uh, our bottom line in terms of EBDA. So under supply chain, uh, in, and especially in my area in distribution, what we did is that we mapped, uh, we mapped out the distribution setup, uh, and we came with several projects, for example, implementation of a Middle East hub, uh, reviewing the US distribution network, implementation of the transport management system, and Uh, last but not least, the R2C project. Okay. And what was at stake? I imagine for, for quanti- quantitative figures uh, are probably not available now uh, for the reason you will explain. But in terms of uh, qualitative uh, perspectives, what, what was it at stake? Yeah. So, uh, as you know, uh, indeed, uh, we are currently in an IPO process. So, I cannot talk about uh, detailed figures. Uh, but what we had at stake uh, were, of course, transportation spend. So mm-hmm. we're speaking about some some millions of dollars there, uh, but also sustainability with the aim to reduce CO2 uh, tons. Uh, and the last one was about quality, uh, because quality in transport is key for us. Uh, and moving from air to sea uh, is also a, a good way to improve quality in transport. Okay. Okay, great. Because many of my customers talk about uh, air to sea in the pharma sector, but few have yet taken significant actions. So where did you start th- this migration in your business and why? What what components did you take into account in the, I imagine, economic equation that you, that you or we calculated? So... Um... What we, when we, when we did the, the mapping, uh, we had uh, four our five factories that were uh, already transporting uh, goods by sea, about 80% of the, of the volumes. Uh, and we had one factory that was managing everything by air. So this was uh, an exception in our network, let's say. Uh, this factory was bought with a specific business more than 10 years ago. Uh, and nothing really changed in that area since. So we really started by this um, this one, uh, starting to map the, the volumes per SKU, per destination, uh, and uh, what we balance uh, to restart the project is the stakes that I just uh, talked about. So cost, sustainability, quality, 
uh, versus the additional lead time on the inventory uh, that um, that uh, were brought, let's say, on top by uh, by that project. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a, a concrete and perfect illustration of the famous uh, ca four component balance between cost, stock, uh, service, and sustainability. That's for sure. Um, so, so since it's balanced and, and not uh, not uh, a, a full uh, a full optimization, I imagine that some people were not completely at ease with uh, uh, increasing the inventory, for instance, or or having risk to to decrease the level of service. How do we go about convincing management teams who have, uh, in that way, contradictory stakes in the matter? I think uh, first, uh, this should be embedded and presented and get uh, endorsed as part of the overall supply chain strategy. So having the right nodes, the right inventory at the right place uh, to be able to fulfill the demand uh, and manage profitability. Uh, of course, so that's, you know, we embedded that R2C project into the overall supply chain uh, strategy. Uh, and then back to the inventory piece uh, that uh, is increasing uh, as per se with that kind of project. Uh, we had to explain that uh, this is a one-time effort to put the setup in place, but that is it is, it is paying up uh, mid-long term. Uh, on both uh, on on all the aspects that we that we mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, so that was you know the um, the explanation that we brought to ensure that everyone had the end to end visibility of the of the project, okay. and then you know that's um, there were always risks that were brought. So what we did is that okay we will bring all the goods by sea, but we do not prevent us to do some kind of expedited air freight. Uh, if uh, we are blocked, uh, you know, uh, if the vessels are late or if uh, things are happening in the in the sea transport, we can always uh, ship the products by air to meet the demand uh, of the market. Okay, okay. Um, you explained that uh, your supply chain is is really global because you have global markets for sure and and also global factories. Um, how did you set up? a totally new way of working between the supply chain, transportation sites, production sites, and even subsidiary teams. Uh, and I imagine also that purchasing was in the loop. So does, does everything happen naturally? Or how do you ensure that the plan is implemented as expected? Yeah, so first, I think uh, to put uh, everybody in the same boat, <laughs> if mm -hmm. I can use that, uh, that image, uh, it's all about vision. So on where we want to go, and then uh, we manage change management, uh, so that's uh, that's really putting the team, the, all the teams together, uh, and of course get alignment and support from the top management. Uh, it's key that uh, this is endorsed, and then this is becoming a priority for for everyone. So you mentioned procurement, uh, that is a function that we do need when we do that type of project. So everybody has clear priority that this is the way to go. Uh, and also, uh, what uh, what I think is is worth is to re-explain often the why when we are also talking to to the teams, uh, to uh, to the stakeholders why we are doing that, uh, and then we can get a buy-in overall, uh, and after we can uh, we can execute. Uh, and back to your second question, uh, oh, we are making sure sure that the plan is uh, uh, is moving forward as per uh, as per we want. Um, I really think that it's worth to, to organize that as a project with a dedicated project manager, governance, monthly reports, uh, success KPIs, showing if we are uh, green, if we are red, uh, making the project visible, uh, if we are winning or losing, so we can get the support we need uh, and have the right, uh, the right um, visibility, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. I, I remember that you implemented this uh, during a period in which uh, uh, sea transportation were a bit uh, um, complex, I would say, or risky. Uh, at the end, uh, uh, did you meet the business case that uh, you calculated? Yes, of course. We, uh, we, we met the, the business case, so we achieved the targeted savings and the CO2 reduction, uh, and we also decreased the temperature excursion that we had with our freight. So that was, you know, a success uh, overall. But for me, the best achievement was really the mindset change. So now sea freight has become the norm. 
uh, mm -hmm. in the way that we are managing transport. Uh, and there is discussion, there is challenge, you know, at all level of the organization, whenever a need arises uh, to use air freight. So that's that's the best achievement for me. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And in terms of global feedback on this project, did you learn things that you didn't anticipate? Uh, what could have been done differently or better? Do you have a, a step back on this project? Yeah, so what, uh, what I experienced is that this has reinforced my belief that uh, change management is really key in those kind of projects. So even with those topics that are linked to sustainability, Uh, where basically everyone wants to live on a clean planet, right? So mm -hmm. that's even with those kind of purpose, this is taking time to embrace the change. So I, I really think uh, uh, this has reinforced the fact that we need to spend the right time uh, on the right resource on, on change management. Mm -hmm. And back to the, to the other question, uh, what could we have done better? Actually, we can always do better, right? So hmm. uh, one takeaway that uh, that I have is that I think that proximity is key in those kind of projects. Uh, and having the project manager or the leader on the site helps a lot. Yeah. So know that we are extending the, the project or uh, let's say to tackle the, the volumes that are a little bit low or work, uh, work in the other factories. I'm putting the project leaders in the sites that are belonging to the sites where the change need to happen. So that's uh, that's an improvement that we that we learn from that project. Okay, excellent. So you worked for uh, people, profit, and planet. So thanks a lot as a, as a member of the planet. <laughs> thanks a lot for that. Last question. I imagine the the, the answer, but I ask uh, anyway. Would you do the same project for the planet again? Yeah, of course, I, uh, I will, uh, and I think we, we should uh, all do that. Uh, but I think it, this will be not enough. So uh, for us, our next step is uh, to look really how we can better now our sea containers, so optimize the load with uh, what we are transporting. Uh, also with other life science companies, so uh, we are looking at consolidation. Uh, so that's one, uh, let's say, one part of what we are doing for the planet. Uh, and the other part is that we are we want to look at how to use vessels that are burning less fuel or that are using biofuel. This is uh, the the other area that we are looking looking at. Okay, a really inspiring uh, uh, return on experience. So thanks very much, Antoine, for your testimony. It was uh, really insightful, and uh, see you in in a while. Thank you, Fabrice. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to this podcast. We hope you like it. Stay tuned for our next episode of this series focused on cross perspectives in the pharmaceutical industry.